Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the shop. First thing I want to say is uh, thank you to the 2,000 subscribers uh, that I have. I've crested that number by just a touch now. Um, it's kind of surprising to me given that uh, the other day it was 200 and now there are 2,000 and uh, I never would have believed there were that many people interested in what I had to say. And maybe you're really not, but anyways. The second order of business that I want to talk about uh, has to do with the fact that, well, I've reached 2,000 subscribers. I'm really having a good time doing this. Uh, and editing videos is, has become easier for me as I've learned the software, but uh, also just more fun. I've gotten a little more creative. And, uh, and now the fact that my audio sucks, especially if I'm moving around or I turn my head like this, uh, is, has become a point of contention for me. So. I uh, did a little research and I bought us a new gadget and we're gonna switch to an external mic on my tablet and my phone and hopefully that will improve things. So let's give it a try. How's this, better? I sure hope so, but I personally won't know until I've edited this. Um, so uh, for those of you who are interested in what I've done here to make my tablet, which is the equipment I use, uh, record with an external mic and the wireless one I'm using, uh, look for another video coming, like it's, it's kind of offbeat for some of the other things I've done, but uh, I think it's a worthy subject based on uh, the lack of results I got searching YouTube for just exactly that. So, All right, the reason we're here is to talk about work holding and what I've done on my CNC machine, uh, the options I've seen and why I use some of them and, and not others. So let's go over there now and uh, get to the heart of the matter. When I put this table together, I knew right away that I just wanted a very simple spoil board. This board on the top is referred to as a spoil board because you spoil it, you ruin it. It's a piece of three quarter inch MDF, which in the manufacturing process is usually fairly consistent, uh, and fairly flat, and fairly stable. With this type of bed, my thought was, I'm new to this stuff, and I am going to overrun the bottom. And as you can see, I have. And I can do that with this style bed and not really care because this is a half a sheet of MDF and when it gets all goofed up to the point where I don't like it, I can take and unscrew it, flip it over, and I'm good to go again. So that was the reason why I went with this. What I've got here are a myriad of ways that I have seen people do hold down on CNC machines. I've seen it done on CNC routers and I've even seen some of this stuff used on uh, a CNC milling machine. So there's the double stick tape. I've used this one, this one works pretty good. Uh, spray adhesive, I've seen this used, uh, works pretty well. Um, I haven't tried this one myself, but that'd be something I would be willing to try. Hot glue. Jimmy DeResa has uh, used this on his CNC machine in some videos that I've seen. Uh, you can use vices. This happens to be a small one. I have had my milling machine vise right here in this corner, my, my full-on mill vise, when I did my touch-off um, touch plate machine. Uh, T-Track. And I've seen where people have embedded T-Track in the tabletop directly, surrounded by wood. And some machines, like the little, uh, the little CNC routers you get uh, off of eBay, those, the whole table is an aluminum, an aluminum extrusion, and those are uh, basically one big T-Track hold down. Uh, another option is blind nuts, uh, putting these in, the, uh, in from the back side and, and having specific spots around the surface where you can mount. And then the method I've chosen is just screws. Hey everybody, sorry about the abrupt interruption, but I realized while editing this video that there were a couple of hold down methods that were worth noting. One is the use of a vacuum table of some kind. I have no experience with it, so if you do and you want to uh, give some feedback in the comments, that'd be great. 
but that's something I haven't tried and, and I don't really see on my horizon at this point. The other method that's worth noting is the use of wedges for clamps and I'll put a link to a video right here that uh, shows Jimmy DiResta using uh, wedge clamps to hold pieces down without putting holes in the top. So check that out and you'll see another method. Alright, so back to what I was saying. With an expendable top like this, uh, you have some options and you have a few less concerns, especially when you're just learning. I think the other thing about having an expendable top like this that, that is more applicable to doing CNC routing is that wood is not always the same thickness everywhere. And you might be planning on a piece of material of a certain thickness, but you know that it's going to vary, so you want to overcut it a little bit. You want to make sure that your cutter clears the bottom. If your table isn't truly spoilable, <laughs> truly expendable, then you could run into challenges. I mean, then you have to start being super careful about cutting through the bottom. And I, that was one thing that I, I wanted to remove from the equation right away. I knew that if I went through the bottom of the part, that it wasn't going to matter. In this style of CNC machine, usually the top of your part, and, and we'll use this piece of plywood as an example, the top of your part is usually Z0. And if your part, if your material varies in thickness, um, you might want to set it a little deep. And, and again, that's where you cut through. You can see uh, this, this piece right here, uh, or this, this cut here was for some push blocks, one of the first things I did and I had undermeasured the thickness of my material so when I set Z0 at the top I actually wound up cutting a little through. Didn't matter, didn't hurt my feelings. Now there's a way around that and that is to set your Z0 based on something other than the actual material. For instance, you could set Z0 at a fixed three quarters of an inch measured from the surface, uh, but I haven't gotten that far yet. That's where you get into something like this. This is the beginning of my zero block. This will be something I'm going to do another video on here pretty soon, but this is what you zero to, and it references the actual work surface. And then you start getting a whole lot closer, and you don't have to worry about your spoil board so much. You're not going to get into that. So that's, you know, when you get the next step. But when I first built this, didn't want to have to worry about it. Aluminum extrusion, why didn't I use this? Well, again, if I was going to hit something, I'd rather just hit a piece of fairly soft MDF. And this stuff kind of pricey, so I figured if I was going to chew something up, let's have it be wood. Will I use this in the future? I can see where I might uh, embed it maybe just in a couple of places where I seem to do a lot of stuff. Um, uh, like I said, I've used glue. This works pretty well, and I've used tape. Now tape works, tape works well if you have smooth surfaces and no dust. Uh, taping to MDF actually works pretty well. Um, taping acrylic down works well. Um, do I use it much? No, and we're gonna get to why here in a second. Uh, hot glue, haven't tried this one yet. Hot glue, uh, at least for the little hot glue gun I have, uh, is, is too brittle and the glue doesn't hold well enough. So, haven't done this one yet. Uh, vice, talked about this. Uh, vices are good. You can clamp the, you can hold the vice down in whatever methodology you want to use and then hold a part within it. I turn to this when I'm doing aluminum or brass or something. So that brings us down to these two screws and blind nuts. So where I started was with just plain old screws. I can take and lay a piece of material down on this surface and screw it down and I'm done. And all I have to do is make sure that my tool path isn't gonna clean off the top of a screw. I think I fixed my exposure changing problem and I've shut off the CNC driver so the fans have stopped. And where'd we leave off? Ah, blind nuts. So blind nuts are another option. And these are one that I'm going to try. Blind nuts can be mounted from the back side of the spoil, whoop, 
back side of the spoil board such that they uh, don't come to the surface. You have some amount of clearance. These are uh, these are about say a half an inch which when mounted from the bottom would give me a quarter of an inch of wood on top where if I cut beyond my, th my thickness and get into the spoil board it wouldn't matter. My plan for these is to uh, put a pattern of these up from underneath. I'm going to do a, uh, a little CAD drawing of one of these and do some cam and then I'll just have the machine go around and punch a bunch of them in before I flip this board and then that, that'll be for the next time. That'll be for when I turn this board over which at the rate I'm going is going to be another three to six months, maybe sometime this summer. In the meantime, I'm using screws. I use screws to hold devices down. I use screws to hold the material down. Um, these are my choice right now. They're quick, easy, simple. I can put them anywhere. And here's the deal. Grab this part for me. Most of my material is oversized. I haven't pre-cut a piece of wood that's very specific, so I always have a little scrap around the edge. If you're cutting a circle like this, you've got this corner right here. It's always available. So next to my machine, I keep a drill and a driver, and I just use screws. I usually use these flathead, kind of a, a washer shaped job, uh, give you a more surface area to hold down, and zip them down to the board, and that's it, everything's held. When I pick a piece up, those screws will have deformed and pulled up the surface of the wood a little bit, of the spoil board, so I'll take and, and just scrape it off, real simple like that, no big muss. There's one right there I haven't done yet, so, gone. So that takes like two seconds. So with screws, I haven't found too many limitations. Again, I don't pre-cut my parts down to size usually. If I did, then I'd want the one thing I haven't talked about yet, which is some kind of a finger clamp. Finger clamps are generally what you use with a, a T-track kind of affair. Something that will, when you have a piece of material that's of a fixed size, and you don't want to ruin the edges, a finger clamp can come up and hold down. There are a lot of ways that you can make your own finger clamps. You can buy your own finger clamps. I've seen some nice blue anodized aluminum ones if uh, you guys know who anodizes all their stuff blue. Uh, lots of options there. The one thing that this doesn't afford you very well is to set a board down at a very, uh, set a board down that is parallel to your y-axis or your x-axis very well. This doesn't natively lend itself to it, but with the addition of a couple of dowels, you can. And I haven't done it yet. Uh, it is what I plan to do this weekend, just run, this little, run a little job, and I'm going to cut a series of holes down the y-axis and a series of holes across the x-axis. And by doing that, if I want to take a piece of material and quickly set it down and screw it down and know that I am in line with my Y, my X, or both, I can put a couple dowels in the holes, in fact, there's one right there, and take my piece of material, my piece of material, take my piece of material and run up against it. And if I have two of them in there, I will know it is in line with my Y axis. Actually, these two right here, because I know what I was cutting when I made them, uh, were there for an index, and there you go. I'm going to tell you where having this type of board paid a big benefit to me, a big bonus. I made a two-sided part, uh, and I don't have any pictures of it. But this part was of an odd shape. It was very round and had a lot of curves, but there were a series of holes that went all the way through the part. And so with the piece of raw material down and I cut the, the part, I finished by drilling holes all the way through into the table so that I could pick the part up, put in a pair of dowel pins, 
flip the part over and lay it back down on those pins and I knew that I was indexed at the exact same spot. They were a mirror on both sides. They were a mirror across themselves uh, horizontally. So by flipping them over and having that index point, I could put them right back. That's something that I wouldn't have been able to do if I'd have had some sort of non-modifiable table. Honestly, a table like this is like having one big jig. You can do anything you want with it and you're not gonna, you're not gonna hurt it. I think that's about all I had to say on the subject. I hope it's been helpful. I would encourage uh, people who are just getting into this to, to use this method because like I said, uh, you won't cry when you cut through your material and you probably won't break a cutter before you can hit the e-stop button if you're going stray. If you uh, liked the video, found it helpful, please hit the like button. Again, thank you to my 2,000 subscribers and uh, take care everybody. See you next time at the shop.